welcome to So What, a brand new conversational show about sewing and with me, Stuart, from the Woolpatch, but more importantly with Carol, Carol Elaine, Master Taylor Couturier. Hey, Carol. Hello, Stuart. Lovely to see you again. Oh, isn't it just? It's been months since the sewing bee videos, isn't it? Too long, much too long. It's <laughs> nice to be back again, talking about sewing and stitching and everything Isn't involved, it? Stuart, really it's, is. It's going to be an interesting type of show. We, we, we enjoyed um, talking, obviously, during the Sewing Bee, didn't we? Um, we did. And we got a lot of feedback from the Sewing Bee shows that they liked the conversation between the two of us. So we thought, well, let's come back with a conversational show where we just talk. Exactly. Isn't it? And, and, and invite people's um, yeah. questions. If anyone has any topics that they want us to cover, just Stuart will give you that in uh, those directions and we'd be really happy to answer any questions you have. Wouldn't it? And, and also it would be good to talk about fabrics, talk about tools, talk about techniques. Um, and we're going to do that um, through these shows. Um, and we'll be doing them quite regularly because the informal conversational show is easier for us to do, to produce. So I think this might be an, a nice way of still giving our experience and your experience about sewing, but make it more manageable. Beautifully said. Because you're a very, very busy person, aren't you, Carol? <laughs> well, since lockdown, you know, I, I had to rely on uh, you know new technology which I wasn't used to and I you know my job is very client facing and that all ended you know for almost two years and I had I had rails of clothes bespoke that I couldn't finish so I had to harness technology and I, and so what I did was I started to communicate with my clients on zoom on facetime on um, instagram and I even mailed out fitting kits my clients wow. you know and and we would talk and they needed all you know amendments and restyling they had prized possessions in their wardrobe and we thought this is a good time to take those lovely garments maybe they were handed down or they found something vintage um but it wasn't maybe age appropriate or venue appropriate so we worked together through technology to amend these and restyle these clothes and it oh, turned into oh. another wing of the business and now it's it's nice that the bespoke is back and i'm back with people oh you know, lovely talking together and it's fa it's fabulous well really. it was it and I, I can understand that because i was able to come and visit you uh last month and it was just wonderful so i, I can imagine you having your clients in your workroom and being able to talk and and share and see and feel it must be just much exactly yeah. exactly because well it's wonderful to be together that's the thing yeah. but also yeah. you know when you're looking at a garment when you're evaluating it you have to walk around it you and it has to be in 3d and yeah. two dimension you know you get confused with left and right which is what we're going to talk about I hope because yeah. because I think sewing is very much a game of opposites. You know, it's left and right, and it's inside and outside, and it's top side and underside, and and you know, it just coping with this. It's much easier when you're there for real. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's it's great to 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 be back and 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 you with your customers and and creating but then uh, the positive story of of how the internet and zoom has has, has helped as well so you've been able to, to to work um and i think that's where this show is going to really help so so the wonders of zoom and me being up in sunny suffolk and you look at that 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 <laughs> that view at the back that's the city skyline there there is my inspiration. That is the city of London right behind me. And, you know, and when I wake up in the morning, that gets me going. Yeah. You know, it's the hum of the traffic and it's the people walking and everyone, you know, fighting for the whatever coffee shop they need to get to first. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's, it's just, 
it's a yeah it's a real inspiration and it creates Brilliant. energy and and we need energy don't we yeah. to get through the day and then to create the show for the youtube viewers out there who who have have joined and subscribed um uh, certainly a lot since the sewing bee um programs went up for my channel and your channel subscribers to your channel you've gone from uh, 10 I think at the beginning of the sewing bee this year 10 subscribers and you've now broken the 1000 subscriber mark that is amazing I'm okay. so pleased I'm so, so pleased and we can now interact with more people and indeed. that's that's the wonder of yeah. technology isn't it really absolutely Stuart? and across the, the globe there are there are people who who watched our videos and commented on on the all gathered up videos uh, about sewing and, and asking techniques um, and wanting more and and some of them just said i just liked having uh, the, the us two chatting about because uh, for the, a brief background before we move on i have a knitting well a yarn and fabric shop in suffolk and new to dressmaking i'm a patchwork but uh, I, i'm now exploring the the the, the dressmaking world so I, I i think six months of dressmaking uh so i, I i'm i'm learning uh, and and people then liked that inexperienced background with your how many years worth of experience under your belt i've been sewing for over 40 years wow. and i started a business when i was 14 and um, never looked back. I did other things with my life, other, other professions, but I always came back to tailoring. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really firmly in my hands and, yeah. and in my brain. And, and um, it's, I really like sharing that knowledge. So thank yeah, you and I think that's the, with your learning. And it works well because the, the teacher of me, I used to be a teacher and, and I love learning, a thirst for learning. And, I, I'm, and I've got no issues of when I go wrong and, and holding my hand up and go, what, I've gone wrong here. Why have I gone wrong? And, and, and learning from those mistakes and making those mistakes. And I, and I think that's what a lot of the viewers, when they watched the Sewing Bee videos have all gathered up that we did. They liked that chat between the experienced and the inexperienced. And how through that chat and that conversation, skills come out, techniques come out, tips come out. Uh, you know, when we talk, uh, you know, sometimes just it, things develop like that, and conversations change. And then, and 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 I think the viewers really enjoyed listening to to what came out. So that is what's going to happen with this show. So why don't we start then from uh, our last show that we did, all gathered up? I wanted to finish with a make, and I wanted to wear a shirt, and I was so working hard to get that shirt for our last episode, but it beat me but i'm i'm proud to say here is said finished shirt bravo stuart well it just goes to show you that things take time yes and if you to do them well and the one thing that i i was always amazed about each episode of the sewing bee was that they were given something like four or five hours to work something out and i came away each week thinking how did they do that you know, because if you're really concentrating, and we'll talk about this, about what you have to concentrate on when you're building a garment, you know, you're, you're, you're making pairs of things and you're putting them together. Mm -hmm. And you have, there's a lot to notice along the way. And if you're inexperienced, this is really complicated. And I can appreciate it, you know. Yeah. Um, so first of all, well done, because it's a really handsome garment. It looks good on you. The color looks terrific. It's, it's, and um, yeah, re really pleased. And this might be an interesting talk point. I washed it for the first time, and because it's linen with a bit of cotton, it's it's somehow changed for the better. I feel. Can that be a right thing? Does that is that an actual thing? Of course. I, I, has it softened? Oh, has, immensely has so. Relax. Okay, yeah. so. So they, they produce this fabric and they might size it, which is a, which is a treatment that, that might stabilize it. And then when you wash it, you that stabilizer comes away. It's washed out. Uh, so right. and then the fibers can stretch and they can relax and they can do this at different rates. 
And did you press it when it was all, when, when after you washed it, did it dry and then did you press it? I, I haven't pressed it, no, no. Because okay. I, I, I just, for, for linen, I quite like not pressing linen, but I don't know whether that's yeah. a thing or not. But linen looks so lovely in its natural state, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it, it, it bubbles, it, it, it fills yeah. with air and, yeah. and it, it can crease, but you know, it just, it's a lovely, I love linen. And, and the collar, because I, uh, there was something I learned there, I, I put interfacing on both sides of my collar, which I think you could do with certain fabrics, but I, you, you said probably don't need two bits of interfacing on a collar, is that right? Maybe not, maybe just the top yeah. collar to, to, to hide the seams, but that all comes with practice, yes, doesn't it? but it's, and it's relaxed. Yeah. And gone a bit more floppy, which I like. But so I, I'm, pleased, I'm pleased I make it. But I thought because we, we finished with that, I thought that might be our good way in for our first show to talk about. And as you rightly said, opposites. Because the biggest part I struggled with um, was I, I, I was able to follow the pattern. It was a very good pattern. It was called the Fairfield Button Up mm -hmm. by a Canadian company. So it was a... Um, commercial pattern um uh but it was very well written so i could follow it very well um and i cut out my pattern pieces uh but i i i probably because it was a solid color i i think i struggled more because there was no right or wrong side i can't work out whether that was my brain making that harder or whether it was harder because it was a solid fabric or should it have been easier because it was a solid fabric with no correct wrong or right side yeah it's harder to tell on a plain fabric it's it's really difficult and i've got i've got a piece of fabric here because i you know i thought we were going to talk about this yeah and you can see clearly which is the right and the wrong oh, side blimey yes so, so this is a silk print of a woven, it's it's a print of a row woven fabric. It's it's really lovely to work with this as well. It's really hardy, but you can see that this is the wrong side, yeah. and you can see that this is the right side. So, on a print, sometimes it's quite simple, but if you've got a plain fabric, and here I have, you know, just a nice blue cotton poplin, and it's difficult to tell what's the right yeah. and wrong side. But the one thing that the one way you can tell, and if you know how fabric is produced, this, this is the salvage edge here. And I don't know if you can see it, and it, don't worry if you can't, but we all know what a salvage is. It's that length of, of the, the edge of the fabric that goes through the loom. Right. And when it goes through the loom, there are hooks on the underside. And the fabric sits on those hooks, and it's drawn through the loom. Oh, I see. And they finish the top side of that fabric. That's the side that's finished. So the salvage is drawn through the loom and it's, it's drawn through by hooks. So those hooks go through the fabric. They enter the bottom side and they come out through the top side. So when you run your hands along the salvage edge, you can feel oh wow the outward you yeah, know, yeah. The, the, and and you can feel that that it's raised where the hook goes through so more often than not that is the right side of the fabric so all you have to do is along the salvage edge just run your fingers you can even see the dots you know yeah. i'm i'm looking through them right now and you can see where there's an entrance and you can see where there's an exit hole so that's really the easiest way. Then what you can do, and I don't have a chalk with me, but you can get chalk in all different colors. You can get it in black and white and, and, and a cream color. You can get it in pink and blue. And the best thing to do is to take your fabric and once you know what the wrong side is, just draw an X on the wrong side. Right. On all your pattern pieces. And yeah. then when you pick up something to, to do an operation, whether it's put a dart on it or cut a slit for yeah. a placket or, or, or attach something else to it, you automatically know 
where yeah. the wrong side is. And if you don't do that, if you don't care, if you if you don't watch along the way, you're you're gonna have trouble. Well, and I, I don't know if trouble. you can see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see this, but if you don't mark your right and your wrong side, here's a bodice with two bust darts. Okay. Now you can see that this one is is the correct one. Yeah. And you can see this one is inside out. And this is what can happen oh. along the way if you're not careful. So it's no big deal. You just unpick this dart, remark it on the other side, and sew it, and then you'll have a symmetrical thing. So when I when I teach, I always I like to start with this idea of, of mirrored shapes. Because 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 if you can understand that, and if you can your brain can cope with that, then sewing and making garments and building things is going to be a lot easier. Uh, right. Yeah, um, that's, and that's where I haven't got to. I haven't fully understood that yet. So yeah. I... But you can start training your brain okay. by noticing shapes that are mirrored. And I like to start with our pair of hands. You look okay. at your hands and yeah. it's a mirrored yeah. shape. When you lay them out flat, you've got center you've got your thumbs and if you go through your hands the yeah. farthest away is the little finger and that's a mirrored shape now this is easy because you can look at your hands all the time <laughs> but because they're a pair and you know that you're going to cut two fronts yeah two sleeves yeah hello mr cat yes you're going to yeah. cut Two collars, one's going to be an upper, one is going to be a lower. You're going to have two four parts to your trousers. You're going to have two undersides or backs to your trousers. You're going to have symmetrical pockets. So this is something you've got to do every step along the way. You've got to know what the right and wrong side is. And you've got to say, ah, I'm going to build a sleeve. And one sleeve is going to go this way. And one sleeve is going to go that way. Yeah. It sounds simple. And, and, but it's really important. You want to be a successful maker, yeah. builder. And I'm sure I was thinking about you the other day because I was thinking, well, it's got to be the same in knitting. This oh, idea of mirrored shapes. Yes, yeah. But I think it's a yeah. very good point. And I do a lot of knitting and you have your, 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 your sleeve um, and and you've got your front and your back, but I think that the thing with knitting is you're only doing one thing at a time. So you're knitting the back, and then once yeah. that's complete, you're then knitting the front. I think what got me with sewing was I cut out all the pattern pieces. So I cut my front and my back out, and I cut I I, I cut the yeah. the the two sleeves out. Yes. But yes. I then, I think I might have had a break because I think I, I think, yes, I, that's right. I did all my cutting one day because it takes a long while to, to draw the pattern pieces out and to cut out. Really? I thought I can't sew the same day. My brain was frazzled. Yeah. Oh, I'm right. right. You get it all pinned up and everything. Everything is straight to grain and all of that. Um, and then it's the concentration of making sure that you stay within the lines and you're cutting exact shapes. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's serious concentration. I can understand <laughs> so, that. So because I- And then there's I think, preparation for each piece. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to make sure that preparation was great and detailed. So therefore not, I didn't want yeah. to then go into the sewing, but clearly I missed those X's off because I then came back to the sewing uh, uh, and uh, I did I, I did the front no problems because of the pocket, so that that was okay. Yeah. Um, and then the back was the yoke, but it was when I came to the sleeve that um, I, I was then stuck with because I got the the placket, and 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 and, and I just didn't have anything marked. So yes. Yeah. So, so I didn't know what was the front and the back. And I suppose with the sleeve, is there a, is it the same for the left and the right, or are they slightly drawn differently? I can't remember now. 
slightly, there's a little bit more fullness on the back of the sleeve. Yes. Um, and there's a, the, the front of the sleeve tends to and then hug the body more. So there's there's no drape. But when you ask a sleeve to do this, you know, uh, you need a bit more room. Yeah. Um, so, and, so of course, uh, I, I got my front and my backs because they weren't marked, oh, no. they obviously yeah. had to be a certain way. And, yeah. and now I understand that, right? So I, what I thought, is this the left arm or the right arm? And I ended up, I think, doing two, two left arms. So I had to then cut another arm out because obviously it was so the you, wrong, wrong way. This is what happened. It's you ended exact, up, you know, it's exactly yeah. that. one it's inside right. out and, and one, yeah, one right then side. And got to this point which then made it even harder uh, because yes. my everything in the pattern there was two of there was you know there was two sleeves there was yes. there was a, a, a left and a right and a cut uh, the, the back but there was one placket diagram yes and so it's like, and, and on my pattern they they used the right arm and and then it was um placed that way and that's yes. when I couldn't work out the opposite because am I sub am I supposed to flip that and draw it the other way on the other arm yes I I see what you're I, I see the problem one thing that might help you got two shapes they're mirrored but when you flatten them out they're opposite yeah with a sleeve the placket opens toward the back. Yeah. The pleats direction toward the back. Okay. So when you're building your two sleeves, you want to make sure that this sleeve, the placket goes to the back. Yeah. The pleats go to the back. And on the up the other sleeve, it's the opposite. But as long as when you you can and when you finish your sleeve part way, your sleeve is flat, but you've got the placket installed, lay it over your arm. Yeah. Is everything going toward the back? Right. Right? Then now you're going to build your other sleeve. You're going to mirror it. But in mirroring it, it's opposite. Yeah. So you can lay that sleeve on the other arm and you can look at it and you can say, what is going, what is going to be the solution so that this is opposite to that and yeah. that's where sewing gets yeah and complicated, I, but I, I, and I I think I should have I, I'm one of these people that are right I want to do one sleeve so I did the entire sleeve so I sewed the packet on and then I got my other sleeve and then I was a bit stuck because I'd completed yeah. the other sleeve so I think what I should have done is I should have drawn the placket with both yes. sleeves out, like you just said, <clears throat> like our hands, and then laid the placket on that one, and then yeah. almost drawn another one and laid it on that. And I could have seen the opposite in front of me laid flat on my table, rather exactly. than doing one sleeve completing it, and then now doing the other sleeve, I almost should have done them both at the same time almost. Yes, and you could always lay them out. Yeah. You can always lay them out and pretend you're so Sewing. you can you can sew with pins yeah you, know, you can you can pin your seam line and then turn things out and make sure they're going in yeah. opposite directions because when you put them on the on the garment you know then you, you can see that yeah. that things have to go that way and that way and and you can build that symmetry but i think you know just so you know i think the most difficult operation is a placket in a, in a sleeve, oh, really? in a fitted shirt. I think that's one of the trickiest things to, to comprehend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so you know, it, and well, and the the pattern I had had great instructions. I have to say, and they had a, a YouTube to show that. And I think that's partly where I went wrong because. I was so ingrained on the right arm and following yes. the pictures, I made a perfect right arm <laughs> and, oh, and I made a perfect good. placket. But it was that yes. whole idea of repeating it again for the left, but yes. there was no instruction. So, so I quite liked your idea. Maybe I was too 
too ingrained on following the pattern instruction rather than actually standing back and seeing it with the pair in front of me. You know, sometimes there's a balance, isn't there, of, of following an instruction word for word, but yes. then almost not seeing the bigger picture because you're so intent. And I think that's what got me. Of course. And this is this is a really important thing. And it's it's not in books and it's mm. not on patterns no. and nobody tells you to do this. <laughs> it's it's what you learn by making mistakes. Yeah. That's tragic. So when I teach people, the first thing I say is if you want to build garments, you want to be a tailor, you want to be a dressmaker. This is a concept that you must get into your brain. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can understand this and if you can think in reverse in mirrored shapes, if you have a concept of the opposite, the inverse mm. of things, if you can just consider that, then the whole task of making garments is a lot easier. Yeah. And nobody tells you that. And you never read it anywhere. And they don't, it's not printed on a pattern. But it's crucial, I think. Mm. Uh Absolutely. Now, um, you know, even, even even making that placket where you have yeah. to bring the front round and, and you know, yes. you're inverting yes. with that. I yes. thoroughly enjoyed that as a technique. Mm -hmm. I made I, I because I, I, I when I when I put the placket onto the, the left arm, I forgot to swap it. <laughs> Obviously, I had a mistake there. I made the placket four times in the end. Oh, um, did you? And I, yeah. I now feel very skilled at, at, that, <laughs> at that principle alone, yeah. just that principle of, of folding yeah. in and out and then back on itself and how yes. it just naturally... And, and, and clipping into the points mm. and all that. Yeah. You know, you, so I can, I can see what happened. You know, you, you, you did this beautiful job first time and you thought, I've mastered this. Yeah. Or I just have to do this again. Yeah. All I have to do is repeat this. Yes. I'm never even, I know what I'm doing and look yeah. how good this one came out. Which just that minor detail <laughs> that oh. <laughs> needed to be reversed. Yeah. Uh, but as I say, I think I missed it twice because also I didn't put the right side of the cross on my yes. pattern. I was yes. confused even more so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the more you think about it, the worse it gets. Oh, you know, oh it starts to, start to mushroom. Hurt my but I because, think. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, there, and there's no help for that because. The pattern just said repeat for the left side. I thought, right, exactly. I'm going to try and do both sleeves at the same time and, and see yeah. it laid out next time, swap that's, them proper. That's right. And again, I, I just say, this is, nobody teaches you this. No. But boy, do you run into trouble, big trouble, if you don't know this. So yeah. it's really, to, to recap it, it's just to know what's the right and the wrong side of the fabric cut out your pieces and mark them. Mark them subtly, you know. You don't want to put a great big X that's going to see. Go around. You don't do that. Make something subtle. You can even mark the right side with a pin. Like I use, sometimes I use glass head pins. So there's a, there's a you know, there's a colored top to the pin. Yeah. So I'll put that on the right side of the fabric. So I'm not putting X's, I'm not drawing anything on. Um, th that's a good in indication okay. and, and it doesn't damage the fabric in any way. So know what the right and the wrong side of the fabric is. Mark it, lay things out, you know, and, and check that what you're doing is in symmetry, that it's mirrored. And it's mirrored looking at the right side yeah. or it's mirrored looking at the wrong sides, both wrong sides or both right sides. Uh, that's second thing and the third and final thing is keep checking yeah along the way just take a minute and always make sure and it sounds a bit overdoing it but you'll catch a mistake that way mm. and and it's better to catch it than unpicking because yeah. that's a drag that's a big old drag so those three things oh. and that's a good start for any beginner well, I, I, I can clearly see that, that idea. Um, uh, 
whereas I was too busy following the instruction and did one sleeve complete, I, I think I could already see, had I laid both sleeves out and then pinned with the front and the back and then pinned the plackets pattern piece in place yes. uh, and, and the two at the same time. So I'm seeing the opposites all the way. I then would have done both sleeves at the same time rather than full instruction on one and then repeating. Yeah. I can yes. see that would already work. So that's a that's a great tip already. Three great tips. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but once I I got through that, um, the the rest of the shirt uh, that there are so many techniques, and hopefully we'll talk about these techniques as as sure. the weeks go through. Um, the different hems, the, the you know the the collar. Oh, what was the one tip you told me? I was a bit. Um, when I was turning my collar inside out here on this stand bit, I got yes. a bit of a fluffy edge um, and, and, and some threads poking through. You said that was something to do with the seam allowance, is that right? Seam allowance, yes. And again, you, I think the seam allowance is when you're uh, inserting the, the collar to the stand, yeah. which is it's called a stand and fall collar, because the collar falls over the stand. Oh, You've got to be really careful with the seam allowances because they're small. They're just a quarter of an inch. That's right. Yes, fiddly. And if you're working with linen, I bet you found it started to fray. Yeah, yeah. And so you can, if you lose a couple of threads, your seam allowance can disappear. Yeah. I so, think I, and, and I probably cut the seam allowance too, too thin. D should it have been better to have left it a bit longer yes, so I could have yeah. really turned it through and then yeah. shrunk it. Yeah. And the other thing you can do is you can take your your stand and your collar, your top collar and your stand, and you can fuse them. You can fuse those with a big piece of fusing, a larger piece, and just start the process so that you've got you're, make, you're making sure that your fusing is even a little bit outside the shape oh. of the collar because your seam yeah. allowances are so tiny. Yeah. You know, but it, so if you lose some of your, because fusing can shrink in the process. When you're ironing on your fusing, it can actually draw in. So it can shrink that piece marginally. Right. But then right. when you want to stretch that into the, the front edge of, you know, the front and the back and the yoke, when you want to make that stand fit and it's suddenly a millimeter smaller and then you start to pull, mm. you know, then you can start messing with the outer edges of the linen and that contributes more to fraying. And then when you want to sew a seam allowance, you think, I haven't got a quarter of an inch. I've only got a big eighth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, so and one of, one of the things before we, we finish, my pattern said a lot, uh, grade the seam allowance. I wasn't too sure what they meant by that. Yes. Grading a seam allowance is instead of having everything flush yeah. and the same seam allowance, you might trim one of the layers of your seam allowance back. Oh, right. Uh, so you can clip, if you have an outside curve, then you clip little Vs. Oh, you know? I see, yeah. And if you have an inside curve, yeah. then you clip in a different way. So it's, it's just taking part of the bulk of your seam allowance away. Ah. Ah. So you have two layers that are the same yeah. width, you're going to shorten one. And oh. we, can, we can do a little tutorial on that, you know, we can, we well, you, you just answered it. And actually, okay. that leads us quite nicely <laughs> on. Done. If you are watching uh, our videos, uh, our conversational sewing videos, and you have questions, uh, please do comment um, below. And we will answer them in the next show. We'll put them to Carol. Um, and uh, we could sometimes prepare for those questions as well and then and uh, be able to, to answer them in, in detail. Or you can always... Instagram us some uh, questions too, because it would be good, wouldn't it? That's the whole point of this conversational show, is Please to be do. able to talk about yeah. what yes. you're making out there in the world and and to put them to Carol 
to get advice on that. And it could be on anything, could it? It could be on tools, it could be on techniques, it could be on fabric types. Yes, absolutely, ask away. Now we're coming into the winter months, we're gonna be sewing heavier cloths, yeah. you know? Talk about grading seam allowances, that's really important. If you're dealing with uh, fleeces or heavy wools or deep whale corduroys or, yeah. Know, the old lovely flannel shirts so yes. you know your idea of grading is is going to be really important for a winter garment so oh please do ask away because we have an idea what we want to talk about don't we Stuart indeed but, yes you know and, and so we'll we'll have things planned but it'd be lovely to be interrupted with something different and then we can we can cope with that talk yeah. that through and and sometimes those questions might actually make uh, revolve the show really it might be based around some of those questions because if two or three people are asking something similar then that might be our topic for the show but if not um, we will certainly have a section where we where we answer uh, the questions that you give if not don't worry um, we'll just keep talking um, about sewing and I'm sure someone will be watching if not it doesn't matter because I'm learning from it um, yeah, and it's and as I said, we just like just like talking about all these different techniques because in sewing there are so many techniques on there, and there are so many different methods of making and different ways of making. Um, like in this shirt alone, um, the pattern that I followed had this that burrito method that they did on the sewing bee, where you oh, are yes, yes, and opposites inside out. That's right. Back to That's front, right. so you. Yeah, because the yolk that that yolk shape is, yeah. is it, it's it's one thing to to do it without the burrito method, but that does make it easier, you know, to enclose the, the shirt inside the yolk and sew that seam, and then the whole thing just flips yeah. out. It's, but it's great, you know. Getting my brain to understand that concept. <laughs> yes. Well, you do need a deep yolk to do that because uh, you have to fit the whole yes, shirt inside. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. but, but I would like to do this shirt again with a flannel, you know, a lumberjack shirt. That would be lovely. Well, exactly. And, you know, that's another thing that can direct our show and our, our, mm. our discussions is pick another garment, Sturgeon, and just start making it, you know, yeah. and we can we can use these uh, chats to to... Get your sleeves in the right direction this time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Pins or tailor's chalk? Uh, are, you, are you? Do you use both? Have you got a favourite, oh. or uh, you would chalk all the way depends. through? Yeah, I mean, if it's a worsted wool, if it's a hardy cloth, yeah, I'll just draw an X on it. It, it brushes out anyway. Yeah. But some some fabrics it doesn't brush out of, like this, like this fine silk. <gasps> it, it sticks to it, and you oh. can't. So you have to be a bit more careful. It just depends on the fabric, really. Yeah. Oh, it's great to be back. And it's great talking to you. It's been, as I say, since our, we finished in May, and then uh, yeah. we were still in kind of lockdown where we couldn't all, all get back together. But um, it's now, it's just now nice to be back in this virtual world talking sewing. Oh, it's been it's so, it so is. It, it's a great life skill. Yeah. And you can, you can sew forever, and it takes you into. I'll tell you that the last the last commission I had is for an elderly friend of mine who has a colostomy bag, and I've made a, a little corset to keep everything all nice and tidy. Oh. You know, I don't mind saying that. It's it's a yeah. It's a precious. Absolutely. precious project we worked on together, and it's you know a lot of things that you buy um medical um supply stores they're all they're all built one size fits all and it's yeah. it, they have to meet all these regulations but you know and they're not always comfortable and so we just devised something using power net and soft elastic oh, and some lovely velcro tabs and it's it's life-changing and this oh. is a skill that you can adapt to so many different things it doesn't have to be fashion it can it can be something practical. It can be something medical, and but if you know, you know how to control your machine and what fabrics can do, and the newer fabrics, you know, like I mentioned, power nets, to some of these wonderful weaves, um, stretchy weaves, and uh, it's it's everybody wins. Yeah, everybody wins, and oh. I'm so pleased that that my skill has taken me into these other areas that, that are really helpful for people. 
Oh, so, wonderful. Well, just um, throw hopefully, that in. <laughs> hopefully helpful to you all out there. Um, so mm -hmm. please do get involved if you want to comment below your questions or your topics or an annoying thing that your sewing machine does that you perhaps, you know, that Carol might go, oh, well, you, you need to put a new machine needle in. It could be something as simple as that. Just let us know. Um, otherwise, we're going to talk about different fabrics, different techniques um, and uh, garment making as well. So uh, you know what the ways to do that. You put them in the comments below. But if not, join us uh, for another So What show in a couple of weeks. Can't wait to see you all. Been good fun, hasn't it? Been good fun. And I just want to say welcome back, everybody. Yeah, welcome back. See you all again soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.